Hey guys, before we hop into today's episode, just wanted to give you one last reminder that our four-day free online trading workshop starts Monday, August 17th. If you haven't signed up already, make sure you do so. There's a link in the show notes. If for some reason you're hearing this late and you haven't registered, don't worry. Still, fill out that email. That way we can send you the recordings from the entire four-day experience. Look forward to seeing you guys on Monday and I hope you enjoy the podcast. Before we get the pound, let's see if I can answer this question on head and shoulders. Okay, so, um, like there's a potential shoulder, head and shoulders on the monthly, then in the daily, and then a smaller on the time frame potentially. In the monthly, the head and shoulders is between 75 and 125, the weekly between 101 and 112, the daily 106 and 110, and the hourly from 106 to 107. Okay, so let's answer this question. What's your trading time frame? So what 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 time frame are you allowed to take trades off of? No 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 not I don't care about the case of large one. What is what time frame are you allowed to take trades off of in general? So when you execute trades, what time frame does it happen on? This trade, no, 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 not not this trade. What time frame in general? I don't care about this specific trade. What, what do your rules say? What time frame are you allowed to take trades off of? The weekly, okay. So I would look at the monthly as your higher time frame, and I would look at the head and shoulders on the weekly as being the one that you pay attention to. Um, the daily and the hourly would be irrelevant because you're not taking trades off of those time frames. So the weekly head and shoulders is going to be the one that should be the most valuable to you, right? The daily should be irrelevant because can you are you allowed to trade up the daily? Nope. So it doesn't matter. Uh, the hourly should be irrelevant because are you allowed to trade off the hourly? Nope. So it doesn't matter. So the weekly would be the one that I pay attention to. You can take the monthly into account because that uh, that sounds like your higher time frame, the monthly. But the weekly is the one that would that would mean the most because that is the that is the head and shoulders that on your trading time frame. Does that clear up the confusion a little bit? And the reason I ask about your trading time frame is because if, if we don't have a if if, if we don't have a um, I guess a set standard for what time frames we're using, then we can run into problems like this. So if I don't if I don't have a a higher time frame solidified. If I don't have a trading time frame solidified, what's stopping me from looking at every single time frame, right? What's stopping me from saying, oh, I've got this on the monthly, but this on the weekly, but this on the daily, but this on the four hour, but this on the hourly, but this on the 15, but this on the five. What's stopping me from getting confused by looking at many different time frames, right? There, there's nothing, right? And there's always going to be something that contradicts something else on another time frame, right? And you can have bullish signals on the hourly, bearish signals on the four hour, bullish signals on the daily, bearish signals on the monthly, right? And, and we're going to end up being confused because we don't have any structure in how we're looking at the chart. So it's very important that we define, I use this time frame as my higher time frame. I use this time frame as my trading time frame. Maybe I use this time frame as my lower time frame. And we have, a cons we have consistency in, in, in what time frames we're looking at for what and if that's the case then you know exactly what you should be trading because the monthly is your higher time frame you can't trade off your higher time frame but you could use it for observation you could use it to look for confluence the weekly is your trading time frame so that's the one where you're going to actually execute your trades off of the daily is going to be nothing for you 
Um, so there's no point of looking at the daily because that, that doesn't fit into your trading plan and same thing with the hourly. Does that help you out any, uh, Vic? Or did I, did I miss, miss the question? I, I think that was it, but let me know. If not, I'll, I'll, I will try again. But it all starts with having consistency in what we're looking at. If, if we don't, if we don't have rules for, just like if we don't have rules for trading, if we don't have rules for what we're looking at, we're going to be everywhere. Well, no, you, no, you don't. You don't trade them individually. You 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 only trade them on the time frames in which you're allowed to trade off of. Right, and let me let me ask you an honest question. Do do you have any? Is, is there a consistent time frame that? Do you have a consistent kind of set? Time frames that you look at for very specific reasons, like a higher time frame and a trading time frame, or is it kind of, you know, are, are you allowed to are you allowed to bounce around to different ones and do different things? I don't want to confuse others. I'd 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 rather. Well, no, and who cares about others? I'm I'm asking for your your situation. Do you, do you have a do you have a set? Do you have a set? Do you have set time frames that you use for very specific reasons, or, or is or do you go all over the place? That's I'm asking you. I'm, I don't care about others. I don't, other, others don't care about getting confused because your trading does not affect others at all. But I, I think I've identified the problem of the confusion. But I just want to I want to make sure. And then of course give you give you a solution and something that will help you moving forward. If you I mean you if you want to of course you don't have to. But I feel because I trade. Options, number of trades must be low, hence the daily and weekly. All right, so so yes or no? Do you have a set? Do you have set time frames that you use for very specific reasons? Yes or no? Yes, because it's the okay. Yeah, okay. So yes, so. What is your higher time frame? What what time frame do you use to generate just your your general analysis? So your identification, what is the market doing? What are key levels of structure? What is what is that time frame? The daily. Okay. Now what time frame are you allowed to execute your trades off of? Once the daily tells you that this is where we're at, this is a key level of structure, this is the overall kind of trend of the market, then what time frame do you actually execute your trades off of? Do you go down a time frame? Now before you said the weekly, so we're getting kind of different answers here. So we just want to I just want to want to solidify this. Because the answer is already changing. So what, what time frame do you execute your trades off of? And, and this, should, this should be a very quick answer. This is the, the Mike Bellafiore six second rule. This is where I'm still not finished. Um, I sometimes go weak. Okay, so, 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 yeah. So here's what you need to do going forward. Because you can't sometimes go weekly, sometimes go daily, sometimes, right? Because there's, there's going to be no consistency in your trading. I have a very, a very simple formula for trading um success right um obviously you got to learn you got to handle your psychology all the stuff that no one wants to talk about right but after you've done all that stuff right consistent analysis plus consistent execution equals consistent results meaning that if you analyze the market the same exact way each and every time and you're looking for the same exact trades right so trades that meet your plan meet your rules for engagement the ones that have been proven to be testable, verifiable, and repeatable. You've back tested them. They have a positive expectancy, right? All the all the things. They they have checked all the boxes. And this is kind of after this is the end of the whole learning and back testing, strategy development, and, and psychological discipline process, right? Consistent analysis. You analyze the market the same exact way, right? You look for the same exact opportunities. You use your time frames in the same exact way. So it's a you know daily four hour, hourly, or monthly, daily, four hour, whatever it may be, right? 
consistent analysis plus consistent execution. So execution is basically taking the trades you're supposed to take, right? Not ignoring your good setups, not hopping in setups that don't meet your rules, not entering early, not entering late. I guess you can expand that to not moving, you know, not moving stops, not moving targets, um, stuff like that as well. Consistent execution or consistent analysis plus consistent execution equals consistent results. And that goes hand in hand with kind of the what I talked about earlier, how trading is boring. I'm mechanical. You guys know what I'm going to say before I, I even say it because I come in, I do the same darn thing every single day. Now, if we take a step back, if we, if we take a look at that, that simple equation, right, that two step process, boom, plus this, right? If we're sometimes on the weekly as our higher time frame, but sometimes on the daily, but sometimes executing off the monthly, but other times executing off the hourly, are we performing consistent analysis? What would you guys say? We are not performing consistent analysis. So if we're not performing consistent analysis, if we're looking at different things each time or different things each day, can we then have consistent execution? Nope, right? And so now we don't have consistent analysis because we don't have consistent analysis, we can't have consistent execution. Therefore, we're not gonna get our consistent results. So if you're seeing inconsistent results, that could be the reason. It could be the reason, it, it could be, hey, you're, you're good at analyzing the market. It could be you have very good um, psychological discipline. The difference could be there's just no consistency in, in what you're doing. And if there's no consistency in what you're doing, you're probably not executing your trade plan per your backtesting results. And I would also argue that if there's no consistency in what time frames you're trading or what you're looking at them for, you probably don't even have backtesting results because you're all over the place. So I would my advice would be this to, to clear things up is to start thinking about what type of, of I guess, analytical flow chart you want to use when going to your trading. Identify what your higher time frame is going to be. So the, the higher time frame is the time frame that you use to get a bird's eye view of the market. It's the, it's the time frame that you're not trading off of, right? There's no temptation to trade. You can allow your brain to wander, relax, be creative, like we talked about with the whole focus brain thing, right? You're simply looking to do analysis. You're simply looking to say, okay, what type of trend are we in? Where is price currently trading at? Where are key levels of support and resistance, supply and demand? You're just looking to do general analysis and, and, and form an opinion on the market, right? You're then looking to predict, okay, based on what I identify, I think we're likely to go bullish. Or I think we're likely to go bearish, right? Run through that if-then syntax as we did earlier. If we break this level, then we're probably going to go here. If we hold this level, then we're probably going to go there, right? Just general analysis. Then when you have your trading time frame, which is a very specific time frame, that's the time frame that you actually execute your trades off of. And it could be a strategy that, that it, 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 maybe it exists in its own right. Maybe if you're just trading head and shoulders, maybe you don't even need a higher time frame. I still think it's cool to take into account if you want to look for maybe extended uh, orders or something like that. But if you're something like a pattern trader, right, a valid pattern trade on your trading time frame doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily influenced by your higher time frame. But the point is you want consistency in what you're looking at. You want consistency in what time frames you're using for what reasons. And you don't want to bounce around from place to place because if you bounce around from place to place, you're going to get paralysis analysis where, which is exactly kind of what, what you brought to me, where it's like, Akil, I'm confused because we have the biggest head and shoulders, but then inside that biggest head and shoulders is a big head and shoulder, but inside that big head and shoulders is a smaller head and shoulder, but inside that smaller head and shoulder is an even smaller head and shoulder. And then the, the brain just runs away from your head. Your brain's like, I, I quit. I'm done. So it all starts with having consistency. So my advice would be to start thinking about what you want your higher time frame to be, what you want your lower time frame to be, your trading time frame to be. If you want to throw a lower time frame in there as well, um, you can do so. Um, 
but start defining what you use each time frame for. I think you're gonna find a lot more consistency in your analysis. And when you get a lot more consistency in your analysis, you're gonna start taking those consistent opportunities. And you know the formula, consistent analysis plus consistent execution equals consistent results. Sounds like a plan.